Hey everybody, Sean from Silicon Theory here, and I just got back from the Red Hydrogen One sneak peek. In fact, I still have uh, the material in my pocket, the um, reminder not to take any video or photos of the display, and uh, the free red logo sticker, so there you go. Um, I wanted to give some first impressions and some context to the hands-on that I got. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, we were not allowed to video or photograph the front of the H4V holographic display, so you're not gonna see any pictures of that, but what you will see are some video of the actual event, some video of me actually spending some hands-on time with the device, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of my impressions as to how I felt while both using it as well as listening to the audio codecs that were announced during the event. So. Let's get started. Uh, right up front, there was uh, this. And then when you got in, you got presented with the opportunity to go and stand in line and wait to actually get some hands-on time with the phone. Now, there were some people there that were being videotaped to um, get their actual reactions to the phone. You had to sign a non-disclosure agreement and some other stuff for using the phone, so we passed on that and uh, stood in line for the regular demo. Now, using the device, which I'll drop the footage of here, After spending some time with the phone, I can tell you this. Looking at the display is something very unique and interesting. Now, I don't know if interesting is going to translate into sales because a lot of the stuff is still prototypey and still very uneven. So for example, when tilting the phone off axis, you got a little bit of blur and a little bit of artifacting, but for the most part, it's really hard to put into words to describe the actual feeling of looking at it. There was one uh, piece in particular that I remember that was uh, an animation. Um, it looked almost like Monsters, Inc., in fact, but there was uh, a celebration of a birthday party and some streamers fell from the sky and a little party popper thing came out at you. It was really very unique, um, especially looking at it without having to wear any kind of glasses or anything like that. So there was some, uh, like I said, some unevenness to it, but I was really intrigued by it. Now, again, whether or not this translates to anything more than a niche product that is gonna be pushed at Verizon and AT&T, but probably not sold, eh, remains to be seen. Uh, some of the other things that they allowed us to participate in at the event was a testing or sampling of the A3D audio codec, which is literally 3D sound that's presented to you and uh, both uh, an over-the-ear headphone and an external through the speakers of the phone kind of environments. And I'll be honest with you, this probably was the most impressive thing I saw at the event. The audio was very spatially oriented, so you had left and right, and you had what felt like above and below, and there's a lot of really intriguing sounds. They used some Bose QC35s at the event, so that was pretty dope. Now, when you see it outside, when you've got the phone in an actual live environment and that same 3D sound is kind of coming out of those speakers at you, it's an even different and maybe more immersive uh, kind of experience. I, I really enjoyed the external sound almost as much or maybe more than I did the headphone portion because it really gave you kind of a feel of what it would be like if you had purchased the phone or got the phone through other means and were actually watching content that was created or curated for this H4 fee format with 3D sound coming at you. The combination of those two things actually would be a really interesting and probably rich experience, but from my money, we're probably still a ways away, uh, August apparently by all respects. So uh, some of the other things that were shown off were a little bit of the engineering team from the display manufacturer, a company called Leia. They were talking about the gaming environments that they hope to be able to entice developers to come and write code for. And they were also advertising the Red Hydrogen Network, which is supposedly going to be a network of 
content that is provided by people, um, maybe in such a way as like a YouTube type of service or a Vimeo or Twitch or something along those lines where sharing from the device itself will be able to be populated. So you could go out, film something in this H4V and then immediately upload it to the um, red hydrogen network and allow it to be shared to other people who would be able to take advantage of being able to see that content on the displays of their phone. Uh, there was also a booth where you could take a selfie that was involved with the person basically kind of taking a picture of you and then turning the camera around or turning the display around so you could see the picture of your face in H4V. That was kind of interesting. It was presented in black and white only. There was no color version of this. And again, because of the off-axis viewing angles, some of the representation of the selfie was a little bit uneven, but you know, all things being equal. For a prototype phone, it was actually kind of neat. The device itself is very large. I'm gonna drop a couple of pictures um, in the spot here so that you can see them, but uh, I had it uh, in hand while I was viewing, uh, and then when I took the photos, they had one of the representatives hold it for me, and then I put my Pixel 2 XL next up to it so that we could compare sizes. It doesn't look like it, because maybe it's some forced perspective there, but it is bigger than the Pixel 2 XL inside the case. It's very rugged, and it seems like on the left-hand side, you're gonna have the volume power button, uh, volume, excuse me, up and down buttons, completely separated, not a rocker, two separate buttons. And then on the right-hand side, you're gonna have the um, power button, which I accidentally pressed more than once while watching the audio content and video content, um, which will have a fingerprint scanner embedded in it. And at the very bottom, it looks like there's gonna be a, uh, what appeared to be a little tiny red uh, dedicated camera button. So that'll be neat. I know that there are people who really like dedicated camera buttons. Um, I'm personally more of a, you know, like the pixel style, we can double press the power button. We can get multi-function out of that single button. So you don't necessarily have to have a dedicated camera button, but when you're using a camera and particularly with presumably what will be the extra modules from red that come with this phone, then you're definitely going to want to have a dedicated camera button. So. I think that pretty much recaps everything. Um, there was an open bar and some free food, so thanks, Jim, appreciate that. Uh, I also got a chance to meet and speak with a couple of other personalities from both YouTube and the internet. So big shout to Andrew Edwards from Gear Live and Dieter Bone from The Verge, who both were willing and kind enough to speak to me while I was at the event. One other curious thing that I did mention, or that I thought to mention, Jim was very specific in the post uh, on the red forums that uh, this was not going to be a press event and yet somehow Dieter still managed to get an interview with Jim and actually some extensive hands-on time for The Verge and uh, I was reading uh, Dieter's post on my way home and the last I checked they were the press so not exactly sure how that happened but you know as one of the other people from um, the event told me today hey they're The Verge it happens so my final impressions of the device are, and I heard a lot of people compare it to something like a Nintendo 3DS, which I don't really think does the display justice. And again, not having it to show you and not being able to represent it to you is really kind of a shame. I think that most people who go and see it will probably intrigue, be intrigued by it. And I don't know if they'll be intrigued enough to spend $1,200 on it, but those are the kind of people who might have a tendency to be novelized or find it novel that this display technology exists. I think the content creators and the people who are really going to push the limits of this phone, who are going to be able to maybe use this phone for what it was originally intended for, eh, those people, I don't know if they were really going to come away impressed to begin with. Because I think really what they're there for is the addition of the accessory modules like the camera modules and things of that nature that really make this phone much more than a phone. The story of the Red Hydrogen One phone is not yet fully written, but maybe in six months to a year, we might know actually what this phone can be and what it can do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to gently press that thumbs up button. If you love the video, you can always hit the subscribe button that looks like our logo in the corner. We appreciate you watching. Take care, and remember, as always, we will talk tech soon.